Thank you so much and we welcome back and we start with our main story for today and men's gold is back in the news because the Bank of Ghana is cautioning the public to desist from transacting business with them because they are not licensed to take deposits. But the question is, why is the Bank of Ghana allowing this to continue? As regulators, where do they come in? That's what we'll be discussing tonight with Joint Business Assistant Editor, George Raffi. But before that, let's go for this story where the chief executive owner and then owner of Men's Gold has been calling the bluff of the BOG. Let's go for this story and we'll be back. The owner of Men's Gold in his post added that today's joke, and I quote, the Bank of Ghana, so now it do propaganda with three emojis expressing laughter and saying that, I beg, Pa. The same post, he says, tell Ghanaians exactly what happened with the five banks or the so-called collapsed banks that you duly license and supervise for years. He added that, please don't attempt to use our dear men's go to cover up. I get, make me think. Now, this expression came with a fire service man Playing Miss V song, Come See My Mother. Post that generated about 430 retweets with some questioning him on his remarks. But he has maintained that Men's Gold doesn't operate under the Act 930. And he's also asking that why didn't the Bank of Ghana issue warnings before shutting down the banks that were recently closed? And again, which regulation or criteria in Ghana should they operate if they need be? Mr. Mensah is also saying that they had a long year meetings with the central bank and resolved and this should be the end of the matter but sources close to the bank of ghana say they issued the notice because the public needs to be warned now this would at least eliminate the central bank from any liability in case the company goes down according to the bank of ghana its own investigations confirms that men's gold is indeed taking deposits and offering guaranteed interest to depositors Sources say it is working closely with other relevant agencies like the Lands and Natural Resources Ministries, the Minerals Commission, the Securities and Nation Commission to take that final action on men's gold. Hmm, very interesting, George. How did we get here in the first place? So we were there and a company came on the scene and they said that for them, even though they are licensed by the Minerals Commission to actually buy gold, they want to come out with some innovative ways in mm. doing that. So, for instance, we would peg your investment as a, against gold, and every month we're going to give you some interest to you as a public. Mm. So we were there, people were raising issues about this kind of module. Then the Bank of Ghana came out and said that, okay, as far as we are concerned, this particular company is taking deposit from the public. Mm. Not as a direct company, but they have a subsidiary that they direct people to, to take deposit from them. Mm. And at each month, they offer them a return in terms of... An interest on... An interest on mm. them to them to pay. The Bank of Ghana said that, okay, be warned, because as far as we are concerned, as the regulator of the financial system, we haven't given any approval to men's goods. So what kind of um, uh, uh, license are they operating with? Well, currently? as far as you're concerned, they have a license from the Minerals Commission to buy and sell gold, just like all the other companies that you see around who are trading in gold. Mm. And if you go through the banking laws, the understanding is that any institution that takes money from the public and gives them something in return, your activity has to be supervised by the central bank, mm. and period, and that's one of them. I one see. Of them. So the Bank of Ghana has been issuing a lot of statements. It's not the first mm. time we, we are hearing from them. But the question actually is, why is it taking them so long to come in to stop these guys from what they're doing? We're in a country we operate by laws. Mm. Even the Bank of Ghana, despite all its powers, cannot wake up today and go that they want to collapse Sandra's bank. There are legal procedures that they have to follow in whatever action that they have to take. And that is why we picked up from the bank. We understand from the Bank of Ghana is that 
these things are warnings that they are putting it out to the public so that they will be insulated from any action that they take or even if the company goes down Nobody would then say that let's go to the Bank of Ghana for a bailout but with you, all these D DKMs and all the rest. I get so, you, but you also agree that, you know, this men's go thing started not today. It's been over two years. We have yeah. issues with construction bank that just came about a year, but they've been able yeah, to take action against... because for them, they were being regulated. Okay. So it was easier to deal with them. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, you have men's gold that was licensed by the Minerals Commission and not the Bank of Ghana. Mm. And that license allowed them just to buy and sell gold. That license didn't allow them that bring your money, we will peck your money against an asset and give you a return. Mm. So directly, the Bank of Ghana wasn't supervising men's gold, unlike the construction bank is. Now, if you talk about what you're doing, some will liken that to derivatives. Mm. And that comes from the Securities and Exchange Commission. We have engaged the Securities and Nation Commissioner telling us that they have not licensed this company to do what they are actually doing. So if you engage all the regulators, mm. what you understand and what you get is that they haven't licensed this particular company to do whatever they are doing. Very well. So we had a latest um, statement from the BOG and that came with a banter from Men's Go. What have mm. they been saying? Well, for them to they are insisting in a statement that they've mm. issued recent, just some few hours ago that they are, as far as they are concerned, they are not taking deposit from the public. And the activities that they carry out doesn't come under the Bank of Ghana. So just let me read a portion for you. Sure. Says that the activities of men gold is restricted to allowing customers to purchase gold or deal in gold as an alternative investment. Mm. Now, that is what you're doing. Now, unfortunately, the sensitive as the statement may be, we resolve to keen to actually encourage people. So they are saying that they are not operating a bank. They are not taking deposits. What they are operating is more of liking to take more of an investment returns to mm, people. Sure. And that activity itself has to be regulated by the Securities and Ancient Commission. I see. And they are saying that as far as they are also concerned, they haven't given men's go the license to do that. So whichever way you turn to, they still uh, can be implicated in a way Wait. for carrying mm. out an action mm. that is not backed by the regulator in that space. I see. Thank you so much for you, that in-depth analysis. But I'm sure the public also has a role to play with regard to this whole um, controversy with men's gold and the BOG. But we take a break. When I return, um, Dao Kwa will be back with the main stories. Welcome back to Business Live. In other news tonight, contractors are pushing for regulation of interest on delayed payments. Now, they are saying that uh, there should be some form of a law to facilitate the passage of this uh, legislation for the interest on payments. Now, according to the chairman of the construction subsector of AGI Rocks in Dogwega, the issue of delay in payments, especially by government, is having a negative toll on the operation. The delay in paying for government contracts has been a major source of concern to many local stakeholders within the construction industry. The phenomenon has led to the collapse of many construction firms as they are unable to service loans obtained from commercial banks and in the process accruing high interest. According to members, the introduction of the legislation on prompt payment and interest on delayed payments will provide some solutions to state agencies awarding contracts. The executive secretary of the construction sector of the AGI is Kenneth Donko. Such that, I mean, if that person does not, then, I mean, and, and that leads to some kind of delayed payment. Um, I mean, it, it, it can actually be um, looked at in terms of um, causing financial loss to the state. And so um, that provision will ensure that um, people work on time. And then the last bit of it is that whenever there is a delayed uh, payment for any particular work, the, it, it is only appropriate and logical and reasonable that there is interest paid on that because banks, uh, contractors use ba monies from the banks and they are charged interest and that interest is supposed to land, I mean, last for a certain period of time. So if it is delayed beyond that, then of course that becomes a mere extra cost for the construction companies to bear and that eventually affects their sustainability, their performance, their ability to um, uh, meet their statutory um, obligations like tax payment and all of that it eventually hurts the economy yeah, um, when you look at it um, comprehensively 
The bill is expected to be tabled before Parliament in the next session. When approved, it will help improve the living conditions of local contractors to a large extent. At a media briefing in Accra, Chairman of the AGI construction sector, Roxin Dogbega, shared some thoughts on the industry's best practices. So whilst I share the Rwandan experience, which doesn't seem to understand what we mean by uh, interest on delayed payment, so in Ghana there is an attempt to get legislation uh, to ensure that service providers in the construction industry are paid interest on the delayed payment, taking into consideration the fact that these payments can delay sometimes even 10 years. Mike shared an experience with us at the last seminar series that it takes him about 10 years to get paid for service rendered. The group is also seeking to help government draft a policy on value for money in its 2019 budget statement and economic policy. Now, the global demand for rice annually is 475.64 million metric tons. Now, Ghana spends close to $400 million on imported rice, and sugarcane farmers at the Sutuari are cashing in on this global demand as the Sutuari sugar factory goes down. Karen Dodu visited the town and reports farmers have totally shifted from sugarcane production to rice. Meet Vincent Kleme, one of the rice farmers here in the Sutuari and the manager of this four hectare rice farm. It formerly was a sugarcane farm, which used to supply the Isutrari sugar factory. Vincent believes that poor management led to the breakdown of the once popular Isutrari sugar factory. Yeah, they don't get the pass. And by then, the, the, uh, where with the Brit British, the uh, whites, and then the whites, uh, what happened before they left, I can't tell. But they left, and then when they go, they, they haven't come back. They didn't come back again. And then the, uh, the blacks who are managing the, the factory, when they did the past, they don't get. So this makes the factory to collapse totally. And then the, all the sugar came. Uh, plantation to was attacked by during uh, the Uloka time, when uh, we got the sunshine continuously uh, over uh, two, three, four years, and then the whole place uh, dried up, and then the uh, electric fire touches, then the, the whole thing. Well, catch the full story on the AM show uh, tomorrow morning. That's on AM Business. But uh, we call them the three wise folks, so Delia, Philip, and Norvan, OPN for short. Yes, and today they are breaking something in relation to money laundering. OPN is next. Hi, my name is Philip Nanfuri. My name is Delia Today we're looking out on the end. Waiting. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> anyway. Today we are talking about money laundering and we just be wondering, I personally do not know what it is, the layers that comes with it, but what Philip just told me is that is dirty money made clean. Philip, what's money laundering? Okay. Okay, okay. Is that money in your phone? Yes, so I was, I was able to gather, whoa, I think my money is missing. No, it's in your back pocket. Okay. No, it's not here again. <laughs> Booyah, it's here. <laughs> So this is money I got from my colleague Sandra and Aben. Now, so simple. Imagine these were my proceeds from my sale of narcotics. And I'm not saying I deal in narcotics, please. Now, this is the sale from narcotics. Hypothetically speaking, I go into the bank and I deposit it, placement. They don't know. There's also another method that is used called smurfing, where you separate up the money into bits. So you have one bit here, you deposit it in one bank, you take another bit, deposit in another bank, and then the last bit in another bank. You reduce. I have four bank accounts. I'm not smashing because. Well, 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 well. Yes. So. Well, maybe you want to diversify your risk, and it's it's it's, it's natural mm -hmm. to have a multiplicity of bank accounts, so that in case one bank is not really doing well for you, you quickly move to the other. Mm -hmm. At some point, the man had four accounts like you, mm -hmm. but I closed two down, and now I have only two. Okay, I have three. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so, but we're not smurfing, please. I just opened them for various reasons. But yes, 
if deposits are coming in very large, you can't trace the source, then you should be worried. So what some of these bad guys do is to break up the money into bits and it reduces the suspicion of a financial institution that this money that's coming in is illegal. And as I told you earlier on, you just break it into bits and pieces. That's a smurfing. So that's for placement. Then after it goes into the deposits or into my deposit account, then I buy some T-bills, I buy some stocks. That's the layering. Then I start getting returns on these T-bills and stocks. That's the integration. It becomes part and parcel of the financial system. And we can no longer tell whether this is legal or this is illegal. Then that's what you call money laundering. Okay, okay. On that note, okay, and ends today with discussions on money laundering. My name is Odilia. And my name is Philip. We're missing out on Northern. Thanks. Bye. Hey. All right. And, two musketeers uh, today. Two musketeers. And uh, N is conspicuously missing. Missing. Uh, well, uh, time to bring you our interview of the day. It has to do with uh, the, the impact of the closure of the five banks on local banking industry. We've been speaking with the CEO of Heritage Bank, uh, Patrick Fishin, who essentially is saying that the impact is going to be temporary. Listen. By the central bank is in the right direction. The issues of recapitalization, what's the state of Heritage Bank? We have submitted our capital plans to the central bank as at the end of June, and the central bank is quite um, happy with the progress we've made. We believe that we'll have our capital in place well before the deadline set by the central bank. There is this perception that recent developments that are currently happening are having a toll on local banks that are definitely doing well. We have spoke to the AGI recently who says that this could have a toll on local banks. The ill perception could subsequently cripple most of them in the future. What's your take on this? I think this is just um, a temporary um, problem. Of course, um, a lot of um, local banks have suffered deposit flights from the local sector to um, some of these multinationals. But it's all because of a um, lack of cert um, certainty uh, on the part of customers as to whether local banks will be able to meet the minimum capital requirements of the central bank. But I believe that once we address the capital injection issue, um, this uh, confidence will be restored and then we'll be able to regain any business that we may have lost. That was uh, Patrick Fishin speaking at the launch of the second uh, C SME CEO and Young CEO Summit yeah. <laughs> that is coming up later in, the, in this year. But uh, that will be it for tonight's program on Business Live. Interesting conversation about uh, Men's Gold, Gold and Bank of yeah. Ghana. I'm interested to see what is going to happen in future. Yeah, um, business um, units will be bringing you more about um, what is happening between Men's Gold and the Bank of Ghana. My name is... Sandra Isenema Fenno. We'll be back tomorrow, Daryl. Yes, my name is Daryl. We'll see you tomorrow.